Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. There is a ton of vital news today. Obviously, special reports we're going to be premiering and more. Larry Nichols, uh, top Clinton insider, dirty tricks operator. The man behind the Clinton Chronicles is going to be joining us yet again. He is battling cancer. He doesn't want to talk about that. Some people got mad at me. He talked about the cancer in the show before, didn't tell me it was a secret. And then when I started talking about it, he changed his mind and didn't want it discussed. But I did get what I said correct. And we sent a camera crew up there a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, Jakari Jackson and Josh Owens to the little town he's living in, in Arkansas, and did a, a documentary piece that looks like something that it would air on HBO. It's that good. I don't know what we're going to call it. Uh, Clinton Hitman Speaks Out. Clinton Insider discusses the fall of the Clintons. I mean, I don't know what name you put on it. Uh, Dixie Mafia Insider exposes the Clintons. And, and I see these emails I get and comments. And it's a minority of people, but I'll address your, your point about Larry Nichols. And I'm going to address his day with him. He's the prodigal son. He was high level in his gubernatorial operation, doing very well, but he had a come-to-Jesus moment like Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and couldn't be involved in killing kids that knew about the drug dealing, which had been killed, and couldn't be involved in shipping narcotics in. And that happened while his daddy was dying of lung cancer, and he thought about, oh, my God, what happens to my dad when he basically gets to heaven? can look down and, and see the type of man I've become, running all sorts of black ops in Central and South America. I mean, Larry Nichols worked with the CIA, you name it. It's on record. And he had a big house, was making tons of money, driving fancy cars, do whatever he wanted to do as a big Clinton insider, and he went against it all and lost everything he had, and a bunch of people around him got killed, over 150 people. Arms, legs cut off. You name it. It's like this MI6 agent that hacked the Clintons. I'm going to cover that with him a few years ago. He was found dead, tied up in a bag, zipped inside a bag in his own bathtub. And MI6 came in and said, oh, he committed suicide. But the police did an investigation and said, no, he was murdered. Have you guys print me some news on that? It was back in the news last Friday and Saturday. I, I didn't cover it. I was waiting for Nichols. Waiting for Nichols to be on. That's who I really respect is people that have been dark, have been evil, have been involved in bad, who then have the strength to get out of it. It's easy to be milk toast and never do anything in your life and sit there and be a Pharisee and shake your finger at people all day. But what's harder to do is to come back from hell. Because it's a long way back from hell. Do you want to take a life? Do you want to cross that line? Because it's a long way back from hell. You don't want to go that way. Most people can't come back from hell. On the cross, there's a murderer and a thief right there. Two men, he says, repent, join me, and today you can be in paradise to make the point that, that it's never too late if your heart's right. And one of them scoffs. The other says, yes, I want it. Christ says, well, we'll be together today. And there's the example right there. So it shows the twisted mind of people out there that they don't get why we welcome somebody like Larry Nichols back into the light because he's the prodigal son. Think how much God loves those of us that have never been truly, openly wicked. All our hearts are wicked, but, but desperately wicked. How much God loves those of us that are more virtuous from the beginning. If God loves the prodigal son so much, the lost sheep, it's the juncture of radio and television. Coming together, meeting Americana, hardcore, naked promotion of libertarian, free market ideas. It's the Alex Jones Show live, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time. That's 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. That's 9 a.m. to noon Pacific, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain, or Tony Montana time.
Thank you so much for joining us today. Larry Nichols, the big Clinton insider, will be joining us to talk MI6 spy found dead in bag in bath had hacked Clinton data, and the government ruled it was suicide. He uh, killed himself and then zipped himself up inside a duffel bag in what looks like a torture chamber. And they admit he'd been being tortured by MI6, but it was only part of the training. <laughs> uh, is this part of the cure? And of course, then the local police did an investigation. They said, no, he was murdered. And that's classic Arkansas where your arms and legs are cut off and then you're found in a plastic bag in a trash dump. And they say you committed suicide. Your arms, your legs, oh, and your head too. Let me give everybody a news flash. You can't chop your head off when you don't have arms and legs. And then you can't put yourself in a bag once that's happened. Now, his arms and legs weren't cut off, but it's still ridiculous. Zipping himself up inside a bag, something Houdini couldn't even do. And they called people conspiracy theorists back when they criticized Clinton for all those weird murders. And they said that about this. Of course, the magic term conspiracy theorist didn't convince the local police uh, to come out and say that it wasn't foul play. Just like the local police in L.A. said that Sirhan Sirhan didn't shoot Robert F. Kennedy and was drugged. Oh, but the FBI said he did. Just a classic example. Speaking of that, this is in the news today up on Infowars.com. And it breaks down the fact that there are now muggings happening in the Western world, Paris and other places with an amnesic drug being given to men by basically women that come up and hit on them and then blow it in their face. And then you can tell the man to go into his apartment, into his condo, into his hotel and, and give you everything he's got. Go to the bank and go in and check out every amount of money he's got. Same stuff you've heard about in Colombia with this plant extract. There's also puffer fish extract can do it. It's called devil's breath. And that ties into the drugs that different governments and agencies and corporations have where you can put somebody on amnesics or similar drugs and then you can tell them, go into that movie theater and shoot everybody. And the person will say, okay, go in the movie theater and shoot everybody. And then they'll do it. And in so many cases, these people are on these type of drugs. And they classify the toxicology reports because the local police grab them they go, this guy's whacked out, take blood. They take blood. The feds swoop in and go, we're going to restrict that. Well, who made you God? We've got different jurisdictions to keep you in check, just like the feds are supposed to keep the locals in check, and the locals keep the feds in check. That's why we have jurisdictions. There's the headline, mystery zombie drug used in Paris muggings, devil's breath zombie drug. Because when I get up here and I talk about mind control drugs, People say, oh, there's no such thing. Yes, there are. My dad's a retired dentist and oral surgeon. And I've talked to many other dentists as well. You can give somebody Halcyon that's not one-tenth as strong as some of these drugs. This is a standard drug they give you to pull your wisdom teeth. You're not out. You're not under. You're there. You can talk, but you don't know what planet you're on. And most people, you can tell them to do anything you want when they're on it. Go jump off that cliff. Stick your hand in this garbage disposal. And so when you've got 20% of the public on a similar class of psychotropics that put you in a trance, dreamlike state, people are highly suggestible, and then television itself becomes a mass mind control machine. We've all heard of suspended disbelief. You walk in, you see your kids watching television, their eyes are wide open, their mouths are wide open, drool is dripping, we've all seen that. You walk into a movie theater a little bit late, people are already in suspended disbelief. You get up and go to the bathroom, you come back in, and everybody is just staring like zombies. When I was a youth, television was like that for me. It's never like that anymore. It's always cerebral. It's always analysis. It can be fun. It can be interesting to see the propaganda, the messages, but I never suspend disbelief. 
Never. And quite frankly, it's torturous. I uh, look at people that get to live in La La Land, the Matrix, and I, I actually envy you at some levels. Because my brain's always on. Unless I'm at the beach with the rhythmic waves, the natural systems that God gave us to become entranced by nature, a babbling brook just right, the ocean with the seagulls, two or three beers. I can sit back and just watch the people and the folks surfing and just trance out and two hours goes by. And I feel like a giant weight is off my shoulders if I can just trance out a few times a year. It's why I need to go to the beach more. It's the only place I can go into a trance. And it's why people go and they meditate at the beach or they meditate by a babbling brook because that's a natural thing we're supposed to do sometimes is go to the quiet place, the most high, that King David wrote about. The problem is the globalists put us into an artificial quiet place of the most high and then hit us with zombies tearing people apart. All the social messages, all the demonization of the family, all the murder, all the death. Every major movie I see about cops now is about the cops with total surveillance grids to track everything you're doing in lifetime, which is true. It's illegal. The average cop is, doesn't have access to it yet, but it's being phased in and handed out, and we're all being acclimated. And when you go see something like Fast and Furious, the latest one, or any of this, it's just pure propaganda. Never seen a Fast and Furious, but I like Kurt Russell. So I went to see it, and it was just terrible. Total false reality, cars driving down five miles of cliffs and not blowing their tires. Just the most ridiculous, mindless garbage. A giant recruiting movie for the FBI, Homeland Security, and the CIA. With this eye of God software where they can track everything in real time with this system. Just, 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 just utter comic book garbage. Gave me such a headache that I had to get out of it towards the end. I just could not watch the full-on assault on reality. So it's natural and it's normal to want to get into a relaxed place. But that's not what's happening when you go into a trance, when you go into dream state, when you go into the edge of not being conscious watching television or TV. You are now defenseless having your subconscious savaged viciously. Well, everybody gives their kids smartphones. Well, everybody lets their kids watch two, three hours of TV. And look, I get wanting to turn the TV on and, and you know go in the bedroom and watch television with your wife or your girlfriend or your husband and wanting to you know do something else, wanting to have dinner in bed. But your children are being murdered psychologically while they're, I mean, if they're watching some old movie, that's fine. If they're, you know, seeing, so, th that's different. But when they're in there watching the modern culture that's designed to destroy attention spans, when they're in there engrossed in that, they are losing their consciousness. And that's a fact. You can look up screen time, brain damaging children. Every major scientist looks at it. It's conclusive. You can look at video games destroying gray matter in the brain. And people say, don't talk about my video games. You say what you want, you leave them alone. Hey, I'm not attacking your video games. You go ahead and do it if you want. I'm telling you, it's designed with the flicker rate and the software and all of it to suck you in. It is a weapon system, as Edward Bernays said. It's a fact. And it's destroying your potential. Now, I didn't mean to get up on this whole talk about mind control. We have huge news across the board. I want to open the phones up. It's just to understand why we're in so much trouble. You need to understand the average adult watches four hours of TV and about two hours to three hours of screen time. That's four, five, six, seven hours. Youth now are getting an average of six hours of TV or more. The numbers vary. And about three, four hours of screen time. We're talking about over eight, nine hours. This is devastating. And the real world reading, people watching, listening to music, hiking, driving your car. All of that will build your brain up. Joining a MMA class, 
joining a box 